everybody, I'm Danielle from Mix Measure Make. You can find my blog at mixmeasuremake.com. Today I'm sharing how to design super easy barn quilt designs like this, or like this, using the Inkscape program. Follow along to learn how. Here we are with the Inkscape program, which is a free and open source piece of software that I like to use to design my unique barn quilt squares very quickly. Inkscape is a program that you can download in Mac or Windows versions, and it is a vector diagram piece of software. There are a lot of tools and settings. You can do so many things with it, and I don't even understand half of the settings yet but you only need a few settings and tools in order to be able to very quickly design barn quilts. And so I really like using this piece of software for this purpose. Some people use fancy quilt designing software to make their barn quilts, but it's really not necessary, especially if you're not a quilter. So I'm going to show you the few tools and settings that I use so that you can follow along and do the same thing. So when you open your Inkscape program after downloading it, the first thing you're going to want to do is to go to view and turn on the page grid. Um, when you're designing geometric barn quilt squares with squares and triangles, it's all about the grid and you need the grid and a scale to be able to translate it onto your wood and to paint the design. Now I'm going to zoom in so that I am not seeing the whole thing at once. And there's only a few tools that you need over here. This one is the cursor, which allows you to select and move objects around. This one turns it into um, an object where you can see the nodes which we will use when we change squares into triangles. And then this tool allows us to draw rectangles and squares. So the first thing I always want to do is draw a square outline of the exact number of inches that our barn quilt will be. So when I bought my boards, I bought 24 inch square boards. So I want to draw a square that is 24 by 24. Now the thing about Inkscape is when you close the program, it remembers your settings from the previous time. So last time I was drawing blue rectangles. So I'm just quickly going to go here, object, fill and stroke, which is going to open my fill and stroke menu over here. Fill is the color that will be in the inside of the rectangle and stroke is the uh, color of the outline. So I'm going to start, uh, you click and drag to make a square and I'm going to, I'll have to count and see how many that is, but I'm going to go back to the cursor for a second and I don't want any, f uh, sorry, that was the wrong one. I do want a stroke. I do not want a fill at this moment. So now I'm going to see how many? I've got three, six, nine, twelve uh, at the halfway point, so it must be 24. And here I've got three, six, nine, I think I need one more. Three, six, nine, twelve. So I've got a 24 by 24 square now. That is the outline that I'm going to build within. And so now I'm going to start, and I like to work in the corner uh, towards the center, and then I can, whatever I make in one quadrant, I suppose, of the design, I can copy and paste quickly into the other quadrants to make it a symmetrical design. Now another good and handy thing about Inkscape is this tool over here at the top, which is snapping, and you can toggle it on and off. So I just drew a square. I'm going to go back to the cursor to show you the snapping. When I've selected it with the cursor, I can move this square 
and it is always snapping it to a corner of the grid so it fits perfectly. If I toggle the snapping off and I drag it around, I can have it sitting in between uh, grid sections, but I don't want that in my barn quilt. I want everything to line up perfectly and be really straight so that I can measure it out and paint it easily. So I'm actually going to turn the toggling or toggle the snapping back on and now it's at the corner. So I'm just making up a design as I go along, whatever suits my mood. I'm going to draw another square. So the first one that I did was four by four, so four inches by four inches. This one I'm actually going to turn into a triangle. So I've created a four by four square. Now I'm going to select it to this one that turns it into nodes. And I'm going to go up here to path and select object path and it puts a node in each of the corners. So now I can select or click on a node and it turns red. If I have a node selected and I hit control and delete on my keyboard, it takes that node away and connects between the remaining nodes. So now I have a lovely half square triangle. Now I think again in making it symmetrical, I'd like to put the same triangle over here. So in order to select it and copy it, I need to go back to the cursor. And then when I have it selected, I can hit Command C to copy and Command V to paste. And it moves one over here and I can move it over here again. It snaps right into place, which is so handy. But now I think I might, I need to fill in the shape. So I think I might want to make another set of triangles going the opposite way. So I'm going to copy it again, paste it. But I'm, this time we have these controls up here. You can rotate and flip horizontally and flip vertically. So I'm going to flip it both horizontally and vertically and then slide it into place to complete kind of a square of two triangles. And I'm going to actually copy that one and paste it over here. And then I think I'm going to add a square, perhaps another square. I can copy and paste that one and drag it over here. Now I think I might want to um, fill in some of the colors so I can start seeing the difference in what my design will look like. If you select a shape, you can select a color down here from the fill and stroke colors. They're, now they're not all here and you can pick custom colors, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, I think I might fill with this color and maybe this one is going to be a green color. All right. And I think I might leave those white. I really do like having some, uh, open white space or background color is somewhere for your eye to rest, but it's really the design is up to you. Now I'm going to show you something else. If I draw another square here, turn it back into nodes and go path, object path. Now I'm back to my nodes again. Now, if I select this node and hit control delete like before, now I have another half square triangle. If I want to make it a smaller triangle still, I can do that by selecting two nodes. So I have to select one and then hold down shift to select a second node. When I have two nodes selected, I can hit this button which is insert a new node into selected segments and it will put a node in the middle. Then I can select this node and hit control and delete and it deletes that node. And now I have a smaller triangle. So now I can copy, I have to go back to the cursor. I can command C and command V and I have this one and I can flip that and put it there. And then I can command V again. I can rotate. So it's going sideways. I'm going to change the color of this one. 
I can't remember which blue I used. Not that one, this one. Put that there and I can copy that and paste it. I can flip it the other way and put it over here. And I love how everything just snaps in. Now, if I wanna move this section over to here and keep this symmetrical, I can click and drag and let go and it selects everything that was completely within that shape. And I can go to object and group and turn them into one. And I can copy and paste that and drag that over here. And now I'm thinking I would like to take this square and two triangles and flip them over here as well. So I can select one, hold shift down and select my other shapes. And I can uh, group that and copy and paste. And then I can flip that horizontally and vertically and put that there. And now I already have a whole quarter of my design. I can group that as one. And then I can copy and paste and I can flip that. Drag it over here, copy, paste. Uh, flip again. Did I flip that correctly? I did. Copy and paste and I need to flip that one horizontally and put that over here and there I have a finished barn quilt design. Now maybe you don't like that and you can go back and make changes. To make changes to um, fill colors for example you're going to need to ungroup the items so that they are uh, completely separate. Um, so we can go back, maybe I want this one. I want some more contrast in this shape. I'm gonna to have to ungroup that and ungroup this. Now, if you make a mistake, you can go to edit and undo and you can work through several changes that way, which is really nice. Um, quickly ungroup that. This one, I want yellow. Ungroup, ungroup again. And I want that to be yellow also. And then, you know, maybe I've changed my mind and I wanna play around with it again. I can quickly delete the three quarters of it and I can change this. Maybe I want to change this one into a triangle and I'll go object path and I will get rid of this node, control, delete. Oh, now I turn it into a triangle. Maybe I want this one to also be a triangle. Object path, select that node, uh, control, delete. Maybe I want this one to be yellow also, and this one to be yellow. Then I can uh, group this again. Group and Command C, Command V, oops, and flip it. And flip it again. And that again. That is the wrong way. Rotate that. So there, I super quickly changed a couple of shapes, changed a couple of colors, multiplied it out across all the quadrants, and I very quickly made changes. I do like uh, sketching my designs out on paper, but this is just so much faster to quickly change up a design without having to redraw the whole thing. Um, last thing I'll show you is how to make a custom color. So I'm going to ungroup this. If I have this shape in the fill menu, you have this color wheel, you can choose any color you like. You can change um, the darkness or the lightness. 
and it gives you the RGB code down here, which is good to write down because it's hard to find this exact color again, or you can copy and paste it. So command C and you can go around, I have to ungroup those first. You can go around and paste that code and change colors that way. So you can do any color you want, squares, triangles, copy and paste, flip them out, they snap to the grid. Uh, then you can simply take a screenshot of this with the grid, print that out and turn it into a scale uh, drawing with a pencil and a ruler on your board and paint it out. It's super fast and easy. I love that this piece of software is free and I hope that you've enjoyed learning how I design barn quilts with Inkscape. And you can find all the links to the blog post about barn quilts with all the history of barn quilts, where to find barn quilt trails, and my tutorial for how I painted my barn quilts below the video. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.